I am shaking like a leaf. Yes, friends, I have been keeping a very big secret from you, though trust me, it wasn't easy. Today I am thrilled to finally be able to announce my brand new palette from Da Vinci. We started working on this collaborative palette back in November, and after months of editing, testing, and refining, Denise's earth-friendly Da Vinci watercolor palette is finally ready for its unveiling. As some of you may remember, I had the opportunity to visit the Da Vinci Paint Factory last fall where I met its third generation family owner Marcello as well as some of the other members of their team. After having worked on the trio project together last year, I was honored to have the chance to work on another collection, this time a full-blown palette. Many of you here on YouTube have seen my favorite series, you've seen me put together several palettes over the years, and perhaps you've even watched my longer course over on Skillshare on how to tailor a palette just for you. However, with hundreds of pre-made palettes on the market today, including some great sets that Da Vinci themselves make, the question was, how was I going to make this palette feel like me without overlapping too much with other products? I can't remember the exact moment that this idea enveloped me, but for as long as I can remember in this process, I knew I wanted it to be more than just a collection of my favorite colors, I also wanted it to be earth-friendly as well. This is a carefully curated vegan watercolor palette containing 24 half pans hand poured by Da Vinci staff in Southern California here in the United States. While watercolors tend to reduce less waste than other paint mediums in general, this palette allows artists to further reduce their impact on the environment by intentionally avoiding the use of cadmium, cobalt, manganese, and nickel pigments. I researched every pigment in this set, focusing on their environmental impact while simultaneously striving to create a well-balanced, functional mixing palette. This set includes some of my favorite primary colors, including some alternatives to traditional pigments, but it's also of course joined by a wide range of earth tones, because how on earth could it be my palette if not comprised of nearly half earth colors? Most of you know that I'm a former zoo educator and a passionate conservationalist. A while back, my viewers requested a video resource on vegan watercolors, and I happily obliged. However, I also used that video as a platform to talk about something that's even more important to me personally, sustainability. While I am fully and painfully aware that my lone actions do little to impact the world as a whole, especially when compared to the waste products of the commercial industry giants, I do wholeheartedly believe that it all adds up, and I personally want to feel good about my own choices, from the products that I buy to what I allow myself to pour down my sink at the end of a painting session. That last bit is important because our drains often run directly into sewers and end up in our oceans and waterways without first being treated, and eventually all those contaminants accumulate and cause harm to the animals, plants, and entire ecosystems that they are now in. But even if environmental concerns are not an important factor for you, there are other wonderful pros to this palette. I do want to be clear that heavy metals like cadmiums and cobalts are very unlikely to harm a responsible adult while in paint form. These pigments are toxic when they're inhaled in dust form, like if you're mulling your own paints, as well as if they are absorbed through your skin. So if you do choose to use these pigments, it's really important to always avoid eating in your workspace and to always wash your hands at the end of a session. However, this set goes the extra mile to eliminate those pigments entirely, making it even safer for you to use in your family homes, though you still always want to keep an eye on your fur babies and human children alike, as professional art supplies should never be eaten, licked, or drank via paint water. To my knowledge, no palette on the commercial market outside of small batch, handmade artisan collections exists with these specific goals in mind. And that got me really excited to work on this palette that is both completely functional as well as mindful. At the end of the day, this palette is just a choice like any other product, but it's one that I saw a gap in the market for and one that I'm very happy to have my name on in the vast sea of watercolor possibilities. So enough with all my motives behind this palette, let's go ahead and jump on in to see that color lineup. 
The start of this palette should look relatively familiar to you. As you've seen with many others before, it has a substantial range of mixing primaries. Our Light Yellow made from PY97 might be a slightly surprising choice for me personally, but both Da Vinci's other hand poured palettes at this time contain my historically favorite middle yellow pigment made from PY154. So I personally made the decision to spend some time getting to know some alternatives and decided on this bright, beautiful yellow. Next up are Hansa Yellow Deep PY65 and Da Vinci Red PR254. These palette staples are longtime favorites of mine. They are tried, true, and confidently included in this set. You've heard me say it before, but I will say it again. Da Vinci's Alizarin Crimson Quinacridone is a uniquely stunning color made from PV19, but much redder than nearly any other version you will ever see. It's a stunning mixing red and one that I couldn't pass up for this collection. Perline Maroon PR179 is a more recent favorite of mine, joining the ranks around last year when I was working on the favorite series. You guys are the ones who inspired me to originally try out this color, and now I'm addicted to this gorgeous deep red. No set would be complete without a functional magenta or pink color for mixing, and this one contains Red Rose Deep, another more traditional version of PV19. We follow up our selection of reds with a single purple, Da Vinci Violet made from PV23. While not my favorite standalone hue, this purple is a gorgeous mixer and one that I would feel a bit lonely without. Next, we start our series of blues, including the rich, dark Indenthrene made from PB60 and a traditional PB29 ultramarine blue. Da Vinci offers a red shade and a green shade of ultramarine as well, but this middle version is my favorite and it granulates beautifully. The next blue will probably be the most shocking color in this entire lineup, and that is a cerulean blue hue made from PB15 and PW6. While you've probably never seen me use this in a former painting, this set felt incomplete without a cerulean blue or a cobalt teal, which left me looking for alternatives. I did a ton of research and I was hesitant at first, but after trying out this hue in an extensive line of mixing, I was completely surprised and excited to find that I could finally mix cobalt teal, cobalt turquoise, cobalt blue, and closer cerulean blue hues all in mixes with this color. While they don't all granulate like the originals, I am completely stoked to be able to share this finding with you and offer an alternative for those other hard to match pigments. Next, we have our cool blue for the set, which is Thalo Turquoise. You might have caught on recently that it's one of my new favorite things and it has functionally replaced my Thalo Blue green shade across the board in almost all of my palettes. I love Da Vinci's version of this single pigment PB16 and I'm really happy to be able to include it here. Thalo Green made from PG7, love it or hate it, is a stunning mixing color that I personally would be lost without. I love using it to mix rich greens and deep blacks as well as neutral tints to darken other colors without taking away too much of their saturation. Revisiting my trio from the summer, I of course had to also include my longtime favorite Perlene Green made from PBK31, which is also wonderful for mixing more muted dark greens and blacks. The cerulean might have been the most surprising color, but this next color has got to be the most exciting because you know what guys? I have my own green. You all know how obsessed I am with a very particular version of sap green and there's no hiding that. I couldn't replace it with another one of the options in the existing Da Vinci lineup, but I also couldn't suggest you mixing your own from scratch since this set doesn't contain PY150 for those environmental reasons I mentioned earlier. I was elated when Marcello said that he was willing to work with a recipe I had worked out for an alternative, and I was humbled when he suggested that we call it Denise's Green. This color is a convenience green made from PY129 and PB60. Both of these colors exist on the palette already, but being a convenient screen in the true sense of the word, I am thrilled to include it so that it can easily be used on its own straight from the pan, in mixes with other colors, or even be adjusted with its base colors to lean in a hue in one direction or the other. Whew, guys, it's just too exciting. We might need to take a little breather here. 
All right, are we ready? Are we composed? Are we moving on? <laughs> we do now have the PY129 that I just mentioned, which functions as a very yellow green or even a very cool yellow for mixing purposes. It's followed by three distinct earth yellows, which before you roll your eyes at me, let me explain. I promise you that I did try to narrow it down to just two, because unless you're me, you probably aren't obsessed with these hues like I am. However, I swear I couldn't. Each is so unique and I reach for them in different scenarios, so I just had to. First up is Gold Ochre, which while emitting PY150, kind of acts as our closest proxy to a Conacridone Gold. It's definitely more yellow and more opaque than Quin Gold, but it can be deepened with Quinacridone Burnt Orange to make a similar type of hue. Next is Raw Sienna Deep, and this color is a little bit of an odd duck. While being made from PY42, which is a version of yellow ochre, this cooler yellow earth tone has a very distinct and unique granulation pattern. Given that I love warm colors so much, I did consider nixing this one in favor of the other two, but I use this color extensively during my 100 animal eyes challenge, even when given the other options of the other colors here. Given how much I reached for it, I just had to include it in my palette as well. Finally, we have Raw Sienna made from PBR7, which I do consider to be more of a light brown than a yellow, but I understand when people put it into that category. I wanted to include a matte and warm Raw Sienna in addition to the others to have a little bit browner option. Like the Earth Yellows, these next two colors are pretty similar to each other when used in mixes. However, the colors on their own, as well as some of the luminosity qualities that they each have are very different from each other and I did ultimately decide to include them both. Quinacridone Burnt Orange made from PO48 is like a burnt sienna that is made from PR101. It's rich, deep, and translucent and has a very glowing characteristic unique to this type of pigment. On the flip side, the Burnt Sienna made from PBR7 has an earthiness that is sometimes called for over the transparency of the PO48, and it's irreplaceable in my work as well. Continuing with our warm earth tones, we have the soft, velvety, and opaque Indian Red, which I find myself using more and more every day, as well as its PR101 partner in crime, Violet Iron Oxide. The latter is a more purplish, deep earth tone that has an immense amount of granulation, more so than any of the other colors in this palette. The last two are our tried and true umbers, burnt and raw. The burnt umber brings a beautiful warmth to the palette, while the raw umber brings depth and a coolness that the other earth tones lack. As a final measure of cohesion and to check for any potential overlap or gaps, I spent days creating a massive 24 by 24 cell mixing chart to show you as many two color mixes as possible. The full chart can be found on my website, which I'll put a link of in the description below if you want to get a closer look at the butte in all its glory. All lined up together, this palette makes me smile every time I look at it. In addition to wholeheartedly loving all of the colors included in it, the proprietary gray Da Vinci tin is a gorgeous finishing touch coming with rolled edges and the paints are ready to use from the get-go without having to fiddle with individual wrappers. I also created two paintings for you to see as a demonstration as just a fraction of the set's capabilities. One being the Red Ruff Lemur in this video, and another being a lab that I painted for my patrons earlier this week, both of which the originals are available over in my Etsy shop if you'd like to pick them up. While the dog was a more casual experiment, the lemur was very intentionally chosen to try and show off a few of my absolute favorite aspects for this new palette. That lovely new Denise's green in the background, the quinacridone gold-like mixtures for the eyes, and a rich multi-dimensional black mixed from phthalo green, and a stunning alizarin crimson. And of course, we had to throw in some earth tones for good measure. 
As we just went over in my top 10 watercolor brands video a couple weeks ago, and in our DaVinci swatch with me just before that, DaVinci Paint Co. is a trustworthy family-owned brand, and I am so unbelievably grateful for this opportunity to create a palette with them, as well as their ongoing support of working artists in the community. You can find Denise's earth-friendly DaVinci watercolor palette on DaVinci's website starting today, right now, and I believe Denise's green will be available in tubes at a later date in the not too distant future. This palette is very reasonably priced at $99 and if you use the coupon EARTH at checkout this weekend through April 7th, you can get $10 off. I will have an affiliate link in the description below and would be ever so grateful for those of you who took the extra moment to click and follow that link on over to their website before placing your orders. I have a lot of thanks to give to wrap up this video, starting with each and every one of you. We just hit 45,000 subscribers, which is amazing, and your support of this channel and what I do was the inspiration that made this set possible. This whole process has been so surreal, and I am truly and completely grateful for each and every one of you. I, of course, want to thank Marcello and everyone at DaVinci for taking a chance on me and our little community here, and additional gratitude for even allowing me to create my very own green to fill a very special place on my palette. I'm also sending heartfelt thanks to Charlie at Doodle Wash and Tanya at Scratch Me Journal, who both originally connected me with DaVinci last year, paving the way for this entire new adventure. And of course, to my patrons, as always, for being my steady rocks and confidants. I am so glad that I got to share this news with you just a tiny bit early so we could have that quiet little moment of excitement together before the cat was officially let out of the bag. I love you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as always, until next time, happy painting.